Hi everyone, Timmy from vMix and today we're going to have a quick look at using 360 video in vMix for live production and streaming. You've been able to use 360 streaming with vMix for a long time now and if you've seen a 360 stream somewhere online then there is a chance that they were indeed using vMix. Now I'm doing this video in 360 so if you want to see what it all looks like um, then you can check the link in the description. Now if you're watching the 360 version of this video on YouTube um, check out the description to see how it's all done. Now as a disclaimer, using 360 video is probably for vMix power users and those that already have 360 cameras and experience with 360 video. Now when 360 video first started, the typical live output of the camera would be dual fish fisheye, which means that you would then need to stitch the video together into a format for your streaming platform. Most cameras nowadays will have onboard stitching or some software or hardware that will stitch it for you in real time. This stitch format is a, it's an equirectangular two to one format that brings in the lenses and maps them in a way that can be seen via streaming providers. Now this format can be accepted by places like YouTube, Facebook and other providers that have 360 support. Basically, if you can input this video format into vMix from your camera um, or your stitching equipment, uh, then you'll be able to use it in your vMix 360 production. Recently we've added a virtual set into vMix that allows you to place 2D objects in a 360 space. This means that you can insert images, video files, cameras and titles that aren't wrapped by the 360 and can be easily viewed or read by viewers. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to set that up. Okay, so now if you're watching the tutorial video, you can see uh, that I'm running a 4K production in vMix. Now I have two Garmin Verb cameras that are able to output 4K live video sources via HDMI. So well, technically that is a 2 to 1 equirectangular format. Um, so technically it's 3840 by 1920 but the camera stretches it out to a full 4K output uh, that I can input into vMix. Now if you are using a place like YouTube, you will need to create an event uh, and select that you are using 360. And I'll show you how to set that up in Facebook. So if you go to the streaming settings in Facebook, um, if you go to Facebook and go to the Facebook settings, there's a little box down here down the bottom that says advanced. So if you tick this, a 360 box will appear here and you can select it. So that's how you can stream. Now. Ideally, you'd want to stream in the highest possible resolution possible. So you're streaming it at 2160, so 13, 3840 by 2160. Um, unfortunately, these settings kind of change all the time about what they recommend to stream to. So I would probably try streaming it at the highest resolution possible as opposed to the echo rectangular format, which will be 3840 by 1920. Um, 4K is going to give you the best you know, options for people to see things in. Um, but you know, if you have to stream in 1080, you, know, you can do 1920 by 1080, or it may require you to stream at 1920 by 960. I believe that's two to one um, off the top of my head. It should be. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of things that you'll need to uh, think about when streaming. So future Tim here. Now I realized after making this video that I should probably show you all of the equipment that I used in the 360 production. Firstly, I have two Garmin Verb 360 4K cameras. Now as 360 cameras with live HDMI output are fairly expensive and we weren't going to really be using them very often, we chose these Garmins. They were the cheapest available at the time when we first started looking into 360 live streaming and cameras with 4K live output. Alright, so camera number one is on the desk in front of me and the HDMI feed from that is going into the Yuan SC560 N1 dash LV PCI Express capture card. The second camera is in the car park and is using a Magewell Pro Convert HDMI 4K+. Now the reason we're doing that is so that we can use NDI and run a 20 meter ethernet cable out the door and then down the stairs. The cameras are then being switched on our studio PC which is a vMix Obsidian reference PC. Okay, so now back to the tutorial. As you can see here, I've got the production set up. Um, I've, got a, I've got my main camera here, uh, and then I'm running the 360 camera that's on my desk here. Uh, and I also have a 360 camera down the bottom here. So this is a 360 camera of the car park. Um, hopefully no one steals all my equipment down there. I've got a, the Magewell Pro Convert plugged into the camera, uh, and that's being powered by a, um, 
by the power of Ethernet and the camera is being powered by that Surface Pro sitting there. Um, so if someone steals this, I will have to go running to try and stop them. So those are the cameras that we've got. So you can use multi-cam switching. So typically you'd probably want to do a you know fade between them. So for those that are watching in 360, we'll be able to see the differences. So now I'm going um, out to the car park again uh, and back to my main shot. So that's how you could use multi-cam. So you can add multiple cameras of uh, 360 and switch between them. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to set up that virtual set. So I'm just going to go to Add Input down here and go to Virtual Set. And if we scroll down, we'll be able to see 360 Video and we'll click OK. Now in 360 Video, I'll now be able to set that up. So if I go to Setup, the layer I want for the camera 360 will be the backdrop that I want to set. So that's going to be this main camera here. So I'll switch to that now. So now you can see I've got the UV 360 Video here. Now, what I want to do is then select uh, different locations. So I've got front, back, left, and right that I can insert 2D images, videos, um, and anything else like that that I want to use in my production. So I'm going to select, uh, let's go with front, and then I can select an input. So I'm going to select uh, this New York City input. So for those that are watching in 360, we'll now see that uh, available. Now. How do I change the position of that? I need to change the position from the actual input itself. So I'm going to go to the position section and then I can move that around. So I don't want to actually change anything on the virtual set. I want to change it in the actual um, input itself. So let me just reset that. So let's just say, for example, I want to move this over here. I want to move this um, up the top here. So I can move it up the top can move it around, um, I can zoom in and zoom out. So if I want to actually move it, say up here, I'll need to make sure that, actually I'll put it down the bottom here. Put it down the bottom, um, I'd need to zoom in and zoom out to make sure that it's always going to fit in this section here. So that's probably a good spot for it, um, down the bottom here. And so yeah, that's how you set it up. So now if you're watching in 360, you should see a flat panel um, of this New York video. Now next I'm going to add another one. So if I go to, let's go to the left and we can add a video to the left, um, which we'll go with this one. Well, let's just get rid of the music on that. Okay, so now I can position this one as well. Um, I can move this around, I can change the position of it, I want to put that on the, the side like so. Okay, so now I've got two images, or two videos, sorry, that are, that are being displayed. Now, let's just say I wanted to use a camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a virtual input of this camera here, and then I'm going to add that to my production as well. So I'm going to add that to the right, and I'm going to use this virtual um, input here and then I'm going to position this to where I want it to go. So let's just position it on the side here. Let's just make it a little bit further up like so. So now I've got these 2D elements within a 360 space. So you should be able to see me. Uh, if you're watching the 360 video, you should be able to see me but also be able to see these videos in and camera in different areas of your production. So when you go out and you stream this now, you will have a full 360 around you, but then you'll also have these elements where you can drop them in. Okay, so let's say that you've got a, so we've got the secondary camera here and you're like, oh, I want the same video spots to be in here. So what I could do is I could actually go ahead and duplicate this video, I'm sorry, create a virtual input of the set and then go back to the setup and create the camera 360 layer as the other camera. So what I can do is create this here. So if I cut to this, it's going to be in the same spot. Now this is handy if you've got, um, say two cameras, but you always want to have a, um, a video playing or a third camera in that same position. So you could set that up to always be in that same position when, you, um, when you're streaming or you're recording. So yeah, you can do 360 recording as well. That's what I'm doing for this today. I'm not actually streaming this out live. Uh, I'm doing the recording so I can take a look at it to make sure that I haven't broken anything. Um, 
So yeah, that is how you set up these new 360 virtual sets in vMix, um, how you can add 360 video. Basically, it's just like adding a normal camera source. Um, you just go into add camera um, and you can select whatever source you've got. Um, same with NDI as well. Like I said, this is um, NDI will produce the same sort of video as if you were capturing a, you know, via a capture card. So this Magewell one here, as you can see, um, this is a Magewell Pro Convert and it's actually bringing a 4K NDI 360 source in. So that's sitting down there and it's coming in over NDI. All right, so that's about it. As I said before, you know, this is kind of for people that already have 360 cameras to play around with. Um, there's very expensive 360 equipment that you can um, use to do this, a little, probably a little bit better than what we have done. Um, this is kind of a really basic way to add some additional features if you are doing 360 video. So if you do have some lying around, you could check that out. Remember, not a lot of um, cheap 360 cameras have a live video output. So you, you may need to, you know, you will have to pay a fair bit of money if you are looking to move into 360 because uh, the cameras definitely aren't cheap. Um, but make sure you try it all out before you purchase or you do it. Check a lot of reviews and that type of thing before moving into 360 or speak to people that have experience with it. All right, so thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video or head to vmix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.